new rig expert antenna analyzers, antenna, SWR, Smith chart, impedance, all kinds of good stuff. Three new different versions, uh, ranging in frequency, but a couple of extra features right now. This is the new green line, what they're calling the green line, this just because that they're like teal in color. I wonder if you can see through that. No, I think it's probably good enough. It's like a it's like a dark teal color, and they're calling these the green line of the rig expert antenna analyzers, and we're going to talk about them today. Shut up and sit down. Ham Radio 2.0, where we do reviews, news, and how-tos of many things that are new in amateur radio. If that is something that interests you, consider subscribing below, pressing the like button, giving me a thumbs up, or just commenting. Just comment. Comment below. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if there's something new you'd like to see upcoming. Let me know if you've used this product or if you've been eyeballing it because they're, they're fairly new. Special thanks to the guys at Gigaparts for sending these to me and allowing me to review them, okay? I'm going to do a review, do a couple tests with them, and send them back. But these are just some really good antenna analyzers. Uh, Rig Ex Expert is probably the top in the field of antenna analyzers. MFJ makes a decent antenna analyzer. Those are real popular because they've got a great price point. Um, Comet and Diamond each make an antenna analyzer. There's some lesser expensive Chinese versions out there. Of course, the Nano VNAs have been real popular right now. But these guys are going to be, these are made in the Ukraine, and they are probably considered some of the top-notch antenna analyzers in ham radio today. As we discussed on the QSO Today Ham Expo, they make antenna analyzers for things outside of amateur radio. They're an electronics company, but a good two-thirds of them have, them have call signs. They're all amateur radio operators, so it's really good to, uh, to deal with companies like that. So we're going to go over here and take a look at this right out of the box so these are the three analyzers that we have here the aa650 the aa1000 the aa1500 now i'm told because i had to i had to go in and inquire because i wasn't sure so why does the 650 and the 1500 say zoom next to it and the 1000 doesn't okay well turns out that on with the with the two models that have the zoom feature you can when you're when you're looking at a chart on the screen, you can zoom down into part of that chart. My my hands are in the camera. You can zoom down and make that chart bigger. Like if you have a dip somewhere and you're like, I can't tell exactly where that starts and stops, you can zoom down to that dip and get a more accurate and detailed view of the chart you're looking at. So that's kind of cool. I talked to one of the guys at, at Gigaparts. He's like, No, I have that. I think he said he had the 1500. It might be the 650. I think he said he had the 1500, and he's like, no, I use that feature. It's awesome. I wouldn't trade that feature, even if I even if I didn't have one that went up this high as far as frequency spectrum goes, as far as the range of analyzing it will do. The zoom feature is awesome, and he's said he's never seen anything else that would do that. So that's a good that's good because I noticed that when I was looking at these I was like, okay, these two say zoom, this one doesn't. What's the difference? Cuz these were all these are all you see they're all the same color. They're all what they call the new green line. So the zoom feature has the zoom in feature that you can zoom into charts and whatnot. So uh just a quick uh look at what's in the box here. I'm not going to do an unboxing. Move that out of the way. This is the box here. They come with rechargeable AA batteries and a charging bank. Okay, so it doesn't appear that there's a way to charge the batteries while they're in the analyzer, but they each take three AA batteries, and the manual says they can run on alkaline or they can run on nickel metal hydride, which are rechargeable. So the problem with nickel metal hydride is that they run down if you just let them sit. They're not like lithium ion. But since the manual says use either alkaline or nickel metal hydride, that's the ones I would stick with. These chargers are typically for nickel metal hydride as well. So they've got a... It, and this all comes with it. Uh, this is in all, all three boxes have this charger with it. Of course, it's a USB cable because you've got computer software you can use. There's a little strap that comes with it. There's a um, an adapter for the for the charger because it comes with like the European style plug on it. Uh, here's a manual 
which is an incredibly well-written manual. I poked through about, I don't know, probably about half of it. Colorful, really well-worded, not to, uh, it sounds like some, whoever, whoever was uh, writing it knew how to write in English, so that's good. Sometimes you wonder about, uh, about the Chinese companies. Of course, uh, rig experts from Ukraine, they don't speak English in the Ukraine, but this, is, this manual is, is very good English. So I thought that was pretty good. So very useful manual there. The other thing they do is they come in these, these carrying cases like this. All, uh, all three of them, well, let me put it in the camera here. All three of them come, came in these carrying cases. So it's like a protective sh um, sheath, sheath with Velcro on top. You can put your strap there. And it's got small pockets on the side. I guess you can put like a pen or something like over there. So they come with a carrying case that's that's pretty pretty good as well. Okay, so this is the one that I chose to. Of course, I I picked the biggest one. This is the one that goes up to fifteen hundred. Oh well, something I didn't say. The six fifty goes to six hundred and fifty megahertz. The thousand goes to a thousand megahertz, and the fifteen hundred goes to fifteen hundred megahertz. So. If all you want is HF and maybe some VHF and UHF, this one will work fine. So it's about 0 0.1 megahertz. So that's like 100 kilohertz, all the way up to 1,500 megahertz. Um, so, so this one goes to 0 0.1 to 650, 0 0.1 to 1,000, 0 0.1 to 1,500. So depending on what your uh, analyzer needs are, if you don't do much in the VHF and uh, microwave spectrum, you probably wouldn't need this big one here. But... If you're just an HF guy, this one's going to be plenty for you. It's going to save you some money that way as well. So let's go over here. I'm going to turn this on. Comes right up. I'll uh, zoom in on that here in a second. This is where the batteries go. I told you that they took three, three double A's right here. Uh, these are rechargeable. These batteries came with the device. The batteries and the, the charging unit came with the device. So I thought that was pretty good. It does have a Type-N connector on the top of it, but it also comes with a Type-N 2SO239 adapter. Uh, one of the MFJ analyzers has this same thing, Type-N on the, on the device itself, and then it comes with an adapter, so that's always good. It's good. It's useful because there's so many different PL259s out there. So let's zoom down here, take a look at that. Right there. Okay, now this one... Right here, we're going to go through the menu real quick. So tools. So what I did was I looked up this setup. I'm like, okay, setup, what does that mean? I'm like, do I have to go through a bunch of stuff and set up this and set up that and set up whatnot? Do I have to program this thing? No, you don't. Okay, it's all set up by itself. According to the manual here, the setup is where you can change simple things similar to uh, language, uh, Color scheme, or co yeah, color scheme. Uh, select a power consumption scheme for the battery. Sound effects. Select system impedance, whether you want to do 25, 50, 75, or 100 ohms, which affects SWR and return loss readings. Again, we typically use 50 ohm antennas and, and coax and amateur radio. This is, this is professional grade. This is far outside. This is useful for things outside of amateur radio. So very useful in the commercial world. Uh, you can set units, bands, cable velocity factor. Choose a velocity factor for the coaxial cable of the TDR mode. Frequency correction, data points, reset settings, and clear saved charts. So setup is where you would basically go and customize it for your own needs. You don't need to like go through and program everything. It's pretty much ready to go out of the box. In fact, I've already put it on an, an antenna and actually put it on a dummy load. It does turn off rather quickly with the default setting. Keeps you from having to, and you can go change that in the setup, but it keeps you from having to charge the batteries all the time, take it apart, charge the batteries all the time. So we got tools here. We can go through and you can do a length and a velocity factor, cable loss, cable impedance, self-tests. I did the self-test earlier. That was kind of fun. Um, you do one, you do a couple of them with nothing connected, and then you uh, connect a 50 ohm load. And I actually found a bad 50 ohm load. 50 ohm load that I had. I was like, wow, that was re it was reading like a 7.4 SWR, and like a 32 ohm or something like that. And I'm like, 
so is so do I not have set, something set right or is this thing telling me that my load is bad? So I put a second load on it. It was perfect. I'm like, my load's no good <laughs> in the trash. <laughs> so that was useful. So I've, I've already used this thing. I mean, it's already proven to be useful. Um, so we can go to calibrate and you can um, calibration not performed. Okay. So th yeah, this is what I wanted to do because this requires you to have some standards, some open, short, and um, load standards. And which this unit doesn't come with those. You can kind of, you can get those. those. They're pretty common. I happen to have a set of them from my Nano VNA SAA2N version, which I already recorded a video with that device. Not sure if I'm going to post that first or after this video, but we're going to try this right now with, um, we're going to start and we're going to go calibrate. Prepare the open, short, and load. Okay, this one is the load. You can see that. There we go. Load, short, and open. Really cool that uh, that I can use these Nano VNA standards for other... I tell you what, it's really cool that Nano VNA made something with a Type-N connector because up until that SAA2N, uh, all of those have been SMA. So, okay. So we're going to go to open short, okay? Press that key. Step one, connect an open calibration standard to this uh, type-in connector on the top. You'll make sure you want to get this snug, but not too tight. You don't want to break anything. So I'm going to click OK. It's going to collect data. Takes it a few minutes. That's okay. Okay, step two of three, connect the short calibration standard. Put that one there with the open. This one's short. I really like these, these uh, type-in connectors because they're larger than SMA and they're a lot easier to read. You can tell what's what. It said calibration not performed at the beginning because I just opened this. I put the batteries in. I went through some menus. I even I, I used it to read that load to see if it was a 50 ohm load, which I, it turns out it wasn't. Um, and so it works out of the box even without doing this calibration. So that's good to know. Okay, step uh okay. That it, it took a it took a few minutes for that to complete, but you know, no worries. We're all good. All right, so that was the short. And it says now to co collect uh connect, not collect, connect the load calibration standard. And we'll go right there. There it goes. Perfect. See what it says after that. So the open and the load went pretty quickly. The short went kind of slow. Uh, it completed successfully. That's all I really care about, honestly. Okay, calibration calibration active. Press F plus two, function plus two to deactivate. Plus the press the check box to recalibrate. Well, I want to do that. So I'm just going to exit. There we go. Okay, good. So just like that. Now, this is one of, this was my good right here. You see that in the camera. This was my good 50 ohm load, which is a PL259 connected to a SO239 connected to a type N. So I'm going to type in this thing on here use this for various pieces had this on my repeater for a while uh because i don't have a an antenna on it right now well not an outside antenna on it anyway so check that out so we've got this dummy load here move that over a touch okay now i'm going to go down here i'm going to go to all parameters this this was a cool menu 
So we can click on, it says, uh, now you see up there at the top, you can kind of see that in the camera is a little bright, 440.500, which is around where my repeater was. So the, yeah, so the 440, it came up uh, default. When I first booted it up, it came up to 800 megahertz. That's just, I guess that's just where it starts. But you can go in there and change the, the, the frequency uh, that it's on right now. So I'm going to click on that. And this shows that my SWR is 1.22, 58.2 ohms, which is still a little high, probably because of the connector I've got on here, right here, I would guess. But return loss is 20 dB. Phase is 39 point, kind of flashing around series model like that so you can go here and now you see the the four uh 440.500 at the top i can go here and and change frequency and i can 454 there it's still good swr and impedance is impedance is a little high impedance gets higher as it goes higher i think this uh i think this dummy load is supposed to be rated at up to 500 megahertz. Well, it's actually getting lower now. See, SWR's dropping. 1.14 now. 1.12 at 50 ohms, around 550 megahertz. So there you go. 1.2 SWR is not bad. 58 ohms, that's a little bit misleading, I guess. But I um, wish it was closer to 50 ohms, but it is a dummy load. It's just something that I use for testing stuff. Um, but it's just a good, good way to do it. But that all menu is really cool right there, flashing the all menu. Then I can go back here and I can look at a SWR meter. And 53, yep. 1.14. Of course, we're at 530 mega. Uh, I'm sorry, 530 megahertz. And what I can do is I can click on frequency range here, which is this number three key. And yeah, let's go to two four. Enter. So now I'm at two two four megahertz up at the top, and I can click on OK. And my SWR is 1.06 on a 50 ohm dummy load. Okay, this is not an antenna; it's a 50 ohm dummy load. Um, but this is stuff that you can do. This is a good test subject. This is what you can do with uh, antennas, coax. You can test velocity factor in your coax. There's a Smith chart right there. That's kind of cool how that draws itself. Okay. SWR chart, that's where we just, oh, okay, a chart. Let's w go there. Right there, that's cool. Change the frequency. Go back, RX, R, comma, X chart. All parameters, setup, calibrate, RL chart, TDR chart, multi-SWR chart. So you can go in here and set multi pre You got a multi-band antenna. You got a tri-band uh, 10 meter, 15, 20 meter antenna, or, or a hex beam, six different bands. You can go in there and set all those frequencies and test F SWR on all of them at the same time. So a lot of really good stuff. Like I said, it is definitely commercial grade with rig expert uh, they do a fantastic job and, and anybody who owns one of these will tell you that this is probably their favorite analyzer whether it's this line the new green line or whether it's you know one of their previous models uh, we use one out at field day one of the guys has one that comes to field day with us he's got one of those ones that's um that's white and got the orange accents around it and i always thought that you know that was a really easy unit to use because it gave you so much information and it was just simple. I mean, it was it, it was complex and the, the fact that there was a lot of menus and a lot of stuff it would tell you. But if you just wanted to measure the SWR, go to SWR, click on, you know, go set your frequency and click uh, click read and you're done. So uh, simple to use and um, 
once you figure it out, it's simple to use and very accurate as well. Easy to calibrate too. These, these, these newer units are easy to calibrate. So once again, special thanks to GigaParts for lending me these. Uh, going to have fun uh, maybe putting it up. I'm working on some antennas. If you saw my shack build video from a few weeks ago, working on putting up a new off-center fed dipole, eventually going to put up the hex beam. If I still have this by then, might use that. Might try to do some comparison, uh, use the MFJ, use the rig expert, use the nano VNA. Might try to do all that. 73 guys, let me know in the comments below who has one of these. If you've been looking at these, this green line is brand new. Like I said, who has a rig, rig expert at all? Any rig expert. Do you have it? What model do you have? How do you like it? What do you wish that it did that it wouldn't do? In other words, if you have one that only goes up to 6 or 650 megahertz, do you wish you had the one that went up to 1,000 or 1,500 megahertz? Do you think that would be useful? You can measure Wi-Fi antennas with this for personal Wi-Fi at home stuff, Wi-Fi extension antennas, or for mesh networking. So that's all good. 73. Uh, if you like this video, check out these videos. No. Check out those videos over there. I always get confused on which way it goes. If you like this video, check out some of these videos over here. And uh, hope to see you next time. 73.